What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made these. <sighs> Beautiful, delicious, smoky, juicy, scratch made, amazing, smoked meatloaf sandwiches. That's right folks, we're making our own meatloaf, tossing it on the pit, getting that nice Texas style bark. Ooh, making our own bread and making the absolute best meatloaf sandwich the world has ever seen. <sighs> Coming up. This is some meat. Ooh. Pat it dry. And what I got here is a beautiful looking chuck roast and some pork belly because we're making a beef and pork meatloaf today. Sometimes I like it all beef, sometimes I like a blend, but you can do whatever you like. And as always, before we get this meat sent through the meat grinder, I'm gonna cube it up so it can chill down really quickly in the freezer and make sure everything fits through the grinder a little bit easier. So I got a chuck roast and some pork belly. Between the two, we should end up with a lovely fat content for a nice juicy meatloaf. And the beef to pork ratio is completely up to you. I'm just gonna kind of see what happens here, but maybe 50 50 if anything i'd lean probably beef heavy over pork but i don't think it makes much of a difference just depends on what kind of flavor profile you're after and just like that into the freezer this goes for the next probably 45 minutes to get nice and cold we go ahead and get everything else ready Next up, I'm gonna soften up all this veg by going into this pan with a nice little chunk of butter and just let that melt down. And then in with our onions, our carrots, and our celery. Not really trying to brown these up too much, just trying to soften them up, make sure everything's nice and translucent and will blend in harmoniously into our meatloaf. And after just a few minutes, these are looking nice and soft. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in our garlic right at the end and let this cook for another couple minutes. Looking good, smelling better. Now I'm gonna set this aside to cool down. Next up, let's get our spices together for this meatloaf, including some kosher salt, some granulated garlic, some red chili flakes, a little mustard powder, some paprika, bread crumbs, and some milk powder. Help with the bind. Let's get that all nice and mixed up. <gasps> Now that our meat is nice and cold, through the meat grinder we go. Going through the coarse dye today. Beautiful. And just to make sure we have a nice uniform grind, I'm gonna go ahead and send this through twice, in case there's any big chunks that made it through. And it'll help with the texture of the meat. Beautiful. Next up, in we go with our sauteed veg some freshly chopped parsley, and all of our seasoning. I'm just gonna start getting this all mixed up. And once all that spice is evenly distributed, we're gonna go in with our liquid, which is some homemade beef stock. Add some nice rich flavors. And I'm also gonna crack in three eggs. A lot of filler in this meatloaf. And now I'm just gonna get this all mixed up until it is nice and tacky and everything is evenly dispersed. We've got some nice protein extraction and it's feeling nice and tough and looking like a meatloaf. And once it's nicely mixed, feeling nice and sticky, I'm gonna pop it into this loaf pan. And that's mostly just to act like a mold so we get a good shape on this thing. And I lined it with cling wrap just to make it easier to get out. You could just hand form this if you felt so inclined, but I like my loaves to look like loaves. So I'm using a loaf pan. Sticky stuff. And now I'm gonna pop this in the fridge overnight. I made this the night before. And that's because I want all the spices to hydrate. I want this meat to get used to its new shape. I talk about it a lot when I make burgers. When you freshly grind meat, it's really loose and kind of crumbly. But if you form a burger or a meatloaf in this case and let it sit overnight, let the proteins bind together. This will hold its shape a lot better and it won't kind of sink out on us when we put it on the pit. And also it'll allow that salt to do its work and end up with a better meatloaf at the end of the day. So I'll see y'all tomorrow. New year, same old boot snake. One overnight rest later. Let's see how this meatloaf is looking. I'm loving the color of that. It looks a little bit darker. That means the salt has really done its work. And hopefully it comes out nice and easy. 
Ooh, very easy. And look at that nice loaf shape. Love that. Plump it up a little bit. But yeah, overnight rest definitely helps. Not a necessary thing. You know, you could easily just make this in one day. I just did that to get ahead of it. Get some prep done the night beforehand. And it definitely does help with the shape, but it doesn't have to take three days to make meatloaf, you know? But before I throw this on the pit, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a nice black pepper crust on the outside. Because one, I didn't put any black pepper in there yet. And two, it'll help build up that nice briskety, smoky, peppery bark. Using some Chud's Barbecue 60 Mesh Black Pepper. Just nice, even, thick coating on there. This pepper will mellow out a lot in the smoke. And it's also pre-ground, so it's not too potent to begin with. And please, folks, don't forget the sides. That would be a rookie move. And I suppose you could go on with whatever you want, you know, just some chud rub or any all-purpose rub would probably be fine, although this is fully salted already. So you may run the risk of over-seasoning, but I don't think it'd be a big deal. But that is looking pretty much perfect to me. Let's throw it on the pit. Running a pretty classic post oak fire today, right around 270 degrees. I got it on this sheet tray so it doesn't fall through the grates or anything weird like that. And we're just going to smoke this until it hits an internal temp of about 160, maybe 165, and gets nice and smoky and nice and barky. Next up, let's make some white bread. Starting with a mixture of some milk and some water going in, followed by our yeast, our sugar, quick little mix, followed by our bread flour. Ooh, almost forgot the salt and need this for about three minutes. And once the shaggy dough has come together, in we go with our softened butter. Now we're gonna let this mix for about 10 minutes. Beautiful dough, love it. And now into a grease bowl this goes to double in size for the next hour to hour and one half. One doubling later. And now I'm just going to pat this out, get some of the air out of it, and try and make it into a loaf shape. So I need to shrink this up just a wee bit. And admittedly, I'm really bad at doing this, so bear with me, folks. And we're just going to kind of roll it. Oh, God. Oh, oh, yeah, this is not going well. Nice and plump. Pinch that seam shut and make a nice little log. And in we go, nestled safely. Now I'm gonna let this rise until it's just plumping up over the sides here. And just like that, looking real nice. And so now into a 350 degree oven this goes for about 25 minutes or so until it's looking nice and golden brown. And just like that, out of the oven, looking absolutely beautiful. Good color on that. Hopefully it comes right out, certainly does. And there we go, beautiful homemade loaf of bread. I'm just gonna let this cool down before we slice into it. And also fresh off the pit is this beautiful barky meatloaf. Nice and smoky, nice and barky. I actually pulled it out a little while ago. It's been resting down. And before I go ahead and slice into this, I'm gonna chill it down because we're not making meatloaf, folks. We're making meatloaf sandwiches. I'm gonna set these aside, let them keep cooking away while we go ahead and slice into this beautiful looking loaf of bread. Pretty easy to make, folks. Ooh, looking good to me. Nice crumb, nice and light, nice and white, nice and fluffy. Beautiful stuff. Got the old chud press here fired up. So we're gonna hit this with a generous amount of butter and start toasting off some bread. Love it. Beautiful. And finally, the beautiful meatloaf. Now that it's chilled down, we can get some nice clean slices out of it. Ooh, that looks perfect. I'm thinking some, you know, like burger size, maybe quarter inch, half inch. Loving the color on this though. Beautiful bind, nice veg dispersion. And of course that lovely barbecue bark on top. I decided not to glaze this one because I'm gonna be searing this off on the old chud press here to give it a nice sear. And I worried that a sweet glaze might burn up, but there we go, nice thick slab. So let's go ahead and get these fried off. A little more butter never hurt anybody. Should I give them a press? I don't see why not. Beautiful crust on there. It's kind of like a cheeseburger, right? But with vegetables in it. It's like a healthy cheeseburger if you really think about it, folks. And at long last, it's finally time to assemble this beautiful meatloaf sandwich. Starting with some sauce. This is just some barbecue sauce and some mayonnaise mixed together. I figure the sweetness will play nicely with the meatloaf. It is a barbecued meatloaf after all. And then you got that mayonnaise because it's kind of like a burger, kind of like a sandwich. So this is what made sense to me, but you can use whatever sauce you like. Next up, go down with a nice big piece of lettuce. 
nice. Oh, that's just so picturesque. Followed by one of our beautifully nice, griddled, smoky, barky chunk of meatloaf. Go ahead and hit down some cheese. We'll do a little bit of American for that melty gooey and a little pepper jack just to spice things up a bit. Oops. Top that with some of our caramelized onions. Ooh, yes please. And then for some added juiciness, just a couple of tomatoes that I sliced up and seasoned. And then we top it all off and there it is folks. The scratch made, absolutely beautiful meatloaf sandwich. I'm pumped. Oh, yep, that looks really good. Pretty excited for this one, guys. And I know what you're thinking. A meatloaf sandwich has got to be the most boring idea for a video you've ever heard. And uh, that's why I put it in January, because no one's watching anyway. But this sounds really tasty to me, you know? I've never put this much effort into a meatloaf sandwich, and I think that this is just gonna be a little bite of heaven, but let's find out. Mm-hmm. Mm. Can confirm, that is very good. Mm. Nice and smoky. The sweetness from the onions and the sauce is coming through. It's very meaty. I mean, look at that thing. It's like a big old cheeseburger. And it's got cheese. Very smoky. Mm. May sound boring to you, but tastes very exciting to me. That is phenomenal. Just the freshness that the lettuce and tomato bring really help balance the cheesiness and the meatiness from that loaf and the homemade bread. I mean, come on, folks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm, highly recommend it. Best meatloaf sandwich I've ever had. <laughs> Ladies. Sandwich time! Whenever I make a sandwich, Lauren seems to just appear. <laughs> and today is no exception. Today we got a nice smoky meatloaf sandwich. This looks delicious. Have you ever once asked for a meatloaf sandwich in your life? No, but no, this looks but amazing. I'm really intrigued. That's kind of what I was just saying. It Two seems different cheeses. It seems real boring, but uh And I'm not gonna lie, like I never have had like meatloaf really. Unless it was like in a microwave package. So you're about to blow my mind. <laughs> this is not from the microwave. Freshly baked bread too, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's just sourdough. Very much not sourdough. Oh. <laughs> All caramelized onions. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, so is this how like everyone makes their meatloaf? No. You just extra no. special. <laughs> <laughs> I like the tomato with it. Really? Mm -hmm. I was debating all day about the tomato because they're very much not in season right now, but... I like the tomato. What kind of cheese did you use? A little bit of American and a little bit of pepper jack. This is a perfect meal if you're really hungry. It's pretty mm -hmm. hearty. Yeah. Yeah. It's reminded me... What was that other sandwich we had? Oh, the brisket one? The brisket grilled cheese. Oh, the grilled cheese. cheese yeah. That, that was heavy. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, the only thing that would make this better would be like a kettle cooked chip. That would be great. Mm -hmm. Or would you pair this with a pickle spear? Yeah. I don't because know. We actually have some on the there. side. Meatloaf can go in so many different yeah, directions definitely. though. Like we could be dipping this in gravy. We could have put, you know, a super sweet sauce or a glaze on it. Mm -hmm. I kind of went the, the patty melt route with the mm -hmm. caramelized onions and the kind of like a burger sauce on it. Distinctive meatloaf flavor. All I want for Christmas is my meatloaf. If you ask for a meatloaf for your <laughs> birthday, I would consider you the most boring person alive. <laughs> Out of all the things your I could. Your meatloaf is anything but boring. It's this is great. I mean, one year I asked to go to Taco Bell. Mm -hmm for my birthday. It's seriously like, so. you went to Taco Bueno for your birthday? <laughs> it is dense, I mean, just listen to it. It's like, it's insane. Fun. It's really good. The old chud thud. <laughs> the old chud thud. <laughs> I mean, this will just put a smile mm. on anyone's face. Mm -hmm. The flavors are so good. Like, it's sweet. It's a little salty, a little cheesy. It feels like a perfect little bite every, you get a little bit of everything. Yeah. I'm actually impressed that you are continuing I'm to eat. I'm putting down the whole thing. I told you I might have one and a half. Dude. It's <laughs> girthy. Cut, just cut the loaf in half. I could do exercises while I ate. Loafing with Lauren. <laughs> All right, folks, I think it's time for the official taste test. And today she's getting the meatloaf burn-ins. Because if you haven't had a meatloaf burn-in before, you're missing out. Perfect little nug. Ow. Yeah, but, but, but. All right, you've been good. <laughs> All right, y'all, that is it. That is how to make an absolutely fantastic smoky meatloaf sandwich. I highly recommend giving this one a try. I know meatloaf often gets overlooked, but I've never seen Brooke eat that much on camera, and they're still talking about it in there. And meatloaf comes together really quick, and you don't need to make it take two days like I did, but that was mostly for filming purposes and other things. But you can easily knock this out in a day, and I highly recommend you give it a try very soon. But all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button, let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I'd love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.